download my free legato course right now and learn to play fast in the fastest way possible. Hey, let me give you a key insight that's going to enable you to take any scale shape and then learn it in just a few seconds or a couple of minutes and then never forget about it again. Never forget how it's constructed, how it's laid out. The brain learns on multiple levels and one of these levels is called the mental, the logical, the structural. It's like, you know, the, the left part of the brain that likes math, that, that's like an explanation. You got visual memory as well. You know, you can recall stuff you've seen. You can recall how things look visually. That's not something you you explain to yourself necessarily. So it's not that part of the memory, right? You got you got kinesthetic memory as well, how something feels, uh, and we use all three when we practice and learn stuff. But the first one, the mental, the logic, the mathematical, structural part of the memory is something we can we can tap into first when we're trying to learn scale shapes on the neck, and. My claim here is that you, in a couple of minutes, as I said, can learn a new scale shape and remember it forever. If you focus on that part of memory, most people don't. They just start playing it. They look at the paper or whatever, uh, whatever chart they have of the scale shape and they play it, look at it, play it, look at it, play it. So they actually try to store it in the visual part of their memory first, but that's the least effective. If you go through all three levels, one by one, the mental, logical, then the visual, and then the kinesthetic, where you feel uh, your round, your way around the uh, the scale. Then you can learn in you know twice the rate or ten times the rate even. Just think about learning a scale shape in a couple of minutes and then not having forgotten anything about it next day. What is that worth to you? <laughs> so let's try to see if we can do this. Um, and I'm going to use an example here, which is the first position minor pentatonic scale. All right, in the key of C here. Why? Right. Um, and we're going to work with that. And I'm going to give you an explanation of how to add the Dorian minor to that same shape. You might be able to do this already, but this is just an example that you can use for anything. And I'm going to talk you through it. And the talking I do is exactly the logical level of understanding how it looks. There might be no system to what you're trying to learn, but you are telling yourself a story of how it looks and why, if you can see systems, make up rules or make up, you know, logical say, okay, this note, is, it actually looks like a uh, cross across, you know, whatever you can put to the process, that is a story or logic to what you're doing, the better. This works really amazingly. This enables you to really get it in there as fast as possible in just one little two minute session. So let's just, let's just assume that you, you have the first position minor pentatonic down and you wanna be able to play the minor pentatonic with the Dorian minor on top of it and go back and forth between it, play the pentatonic, Borrow notes from the pen, from the Dorian minor with no effort. So how do we do it? Well, we see two charts. Let me just uh, come closer here. Um, here we got the first position in C minor in the eighth fret minor pentatonic. So we got the. I'm just going to assume you know it. So this is quite fast. Eighth fret and eleventh fret on the two top strings, and then eighth and tenth on the uh, G, the D, and the A string, and then on the low E string we got the eighth and the eleventh fret. That's the first position minor pentatonic. If you were to play the first position Dorian minor, which works really well for rock, blues-based rock then it would look like this. You would have the top two strings. You would not only have the 11th and the 8th fret, you would also have the 10th fret. On the two middle strings, you would not only have from the pentatonic, the 10th and the 8th, you would also have the notes in the 7th fret on the D and G. Right? On the two lower strings, the A and the E. On the A string, you would have that string where you have the blue note sometimes, if you're converting your minor pentatonic to a blue scale. But that there wouldn't be any additions there. 
but on the low string you would have the eighth and the tenth and the eleventh. You would have an extra Dorian note there. So the Dorian scale would look like this on mode. Right? Two shapes on top of each other. So how do we learn them? Well, you look at it and try to use your logical reasoning to figure out how, why are the, the notes there? Let me see if I can come up with a, some realizations about why the notes are there. Let's take the two top strings. We got a note in the eighth and the eleventh when it comes to the pentatonic scale. And I can see pretty quickly that I'm just adding a note just before my fourth finger. So one semitone under the top note of my pentatonic shape, when I have a minor third in between, three frets in between the notes, then I just add a note just right before the fourth finger. Right? Then I shift to the two middle strings. So that's a realization. That's a story I tell myself. Okay, so I can remember for tomorrow if I want to add the Dorian notes to my playing every time I have a minor third I just add an extra note just before the top note right every time I have three frets in between my finger I add one there okay so next ring next two two middle strings okay so every time I have a whole tone interval I just add one note just below it right and then I'll have my I'll have my ad addition of the Dorian note Right? So that's pretty easy, but I also have a whole tone interval on the A string where I have my blue note sometime. But there's no addition down there. So it's only sometimes that I have that addition when I have whole tones below, right? So I can say sometimes I have a, a, a semitone, but not all the way. So I can say in the first position, I have it on the two middle strings. See, that's a story as well. On the two middle strings, I have an extra note behind the whole tone intervals, but not on the A string. So it's only sometimes that I have, what can I use that for? That's not a rule. We're not talking rules here. We're trying in that attempt to create a rule and then having an exception that you don't fully control yet. You can't say when or why. You, I could say that, you know, on the string that I would normally have a, a chromatic. If I know that, if I know the blues scale, how to turn the pentatonic into a blues scale, I could say that every time I have a whole tone, but the blue note is in between, if I, if, if I add it, then I do not have a semitone below. You see? So that is the, the, the process. And then, I, you know, on the low string, I got my minor third interval again. So whoopty, I got my Dorian note there. So that is consistent, right? With the top and this, you know, like on the two top strings. But see, what, what just happened here? is I'm going through the scale and I'm thinking as I do it with the focus of trying to remember by creating rules, by creating a story. How can I explain my way? How would I explain this to somebody who was trying to learn it with a blindfold on, right? How would I explain? And then you explain it to yourself. It becomes language. It becomes logic. And that will embed the shape in your mind like nothing else if it's the first time or the second or the third time you're looking at it. Because that guides your visual memory. You might have some visual memory, but as soon as you tap into the logic or the reason or the analytical, the left part of the brain, then, ah, yeah, I remember. What is it that you remember? You remember how to construct the shape from your memory, right? Let's just try this out. I could go on and say, okay, let's try the pattern below the first position. The pentatonic, just to see how my rule holds up. So I got the eighth and the sixth on the two top string, and on the two middle strings, I got the fifth and um, eighth and sixth. That's yeah, the fifth and eighth on the two middle string, and on the two low strings, I got the sixth and the eighth. So very symmetrical shape here. And so I could say, okay, if I chart it out and look at where are the notes of the Dorian minor, <clears throat> I could, um, I would then find that that I, you know, the, the first I have a whole tone interval. I guess there's a maybe there's a semitone below. Oh yes, there were. <coughs> what about the next one? Oh, that doesn't sound like it. No, that's not. You know, so this is actually where this is where I have my chromatic interval. If this was a blue scale shape. So there I don't have it. Okay, so no, not there. 
because that's the... Yeah, okay, so here I have it. Let me see, I got two minor thirds in the middle here of the shape. Yeah. So I got the... Again, I rule just right before the, the top note there. And then the two others here. Yeah. Yeah. So that the rule of putting a semitone below, below those. So the only exception here of the whole tone is that again with the blues with the blues interval here, right? So just this little story I told myself here will make me remember that shape and the Dorian shape tomorrow as well. And you might say, well, it's not always that you can do this, but you can always do something. You can always talk about how, okay, there's kind of a there's kind of a shape like that. It's symmetrical here, but not there. And it's skewed like when I come to the B string, you can always talk as you are learning, coming up with a mental perspective on what is going on. That's the point. So I can give you a ton of other examples, but if you don't have this level down, then you are going to rely on visual memory. And that is fleeting, much more fleeting than the, the structural logic memory. So if you just look at the shape, try to learn it, you know, next day you've forgotten some of it, you go back and forth, back and forth like that all the time. If you got your, your logic in order, then you won't have to refer to tabs or charts or anything. You'll actually remember it because you have that story. It's much more easier. You, you must try it in order to, to really get it. Um, so I hope that was valuable to you and it will be if you use it. I can guarantee you that. And as always, Almost. We got a new program out. You can go check it out. Click the link below. It's a really neat little package here. It's all about how to master the five shapes of the pentatonic scale at a level where it's scary, like effortless, with no hesitation, just flying around the fretboard in five weeks. That's a promise. So go check it out and use this strategy here. You, you, you know, right away when you're trying to learn something new. Tomorrow, I'll give you another strategy like this and say, how can we embed stuff visually? And in the third uh, video, another uh, technique again. So stay tuned for these videos. And um, remember to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already done so. Go check us out on Instagram. I think that was all. So see you tomorrow. Subscribe for more free videos. Do it. Do it now. Do it.